Now that you've learned how to create observables, it's time to subscribe to them and see how you can react to them when they emit events. Remember to do pod install and build your project first. And check out the Installing RX Swift video for a walkthrough of doing that. Remember that an observable can emit next events that can contain elements, error events that contain an error and terminate the observable, and completed events that also terminate the observable. Once an observable is terminated, it can no longer emit any more events. To see this in action, add the following example to your playground. You're creating an observable using the of operator, just like in the previous video. Now add this code to subscribe to the observables events. Subscribe takes a closure parameter that will receive each event as it's emitted. You'll just print the event. Check out the console. Each of the elements emitted in next events is printed, followed by the completed event. Notice that the elements are wrapped in the next event enum. An event has an optional element property, so you can reach in and directly access that element if you want to. Modify this example to use the nil coalescing operator so that you're printing the element if there is one, or just print the event. Now just the elements themselves are printed, followed by the completed event. Subscribed is still passing the event to its closure handler, and you're just reaching into the event to access its element if it has one. This is such a frequent need that there's another subscribe operator that lets you specify handlers for each type of event. Change this example again, this time to just handle next events. The naming convention is on something. On next, on error, on completed, and if you have code completion suggestions turned on in Xcode, you'll probably see each of these closure parameters. They're all optional and default to nil, so you can just ignore the other ones here. Now just the elements are printed to the console and not the completed event. So far you've seen how to create observables that emit one or more elements. Sometimes you'll want an observable that emits no elements, just a completed event. That's absurd, you say. Hear me now, believe me later. You'll put this to use in a practical way later on. For now, enter this example to your playground to see how to create an empty observable using the empty operator. An observable must be defined as a specific type if it can't be inferred. So since empty has nothing from which to infer the type, the type must be defined explicitly. In this case, void is as good as anything. Now add this code to the example to subscribe to it. First you'll handle next events and print out the element, just like before. But then you'll also handle the completed event by printing completed, since completed events don't associate any value themselves that you can print out. I'll just line that up better. In the console, you'll see that the empty simply emits a completed event. So if you can create an observable that doesn't emit anything but a completed event, can you create an observable that doesn't emit anything at all? Well sure, why not? Actually this is more useful than you might think. The never operator can be used to represent an infinite duration. Add this example to your playground, and here you're creating an observable of type any using the never operator.
Now subscribe to it, including handlers for the next and completed events. Sure enough, the example header is printed, but that's it. You're going to use never again in the upcoming challenge. Except for this never example, so far you've been working with observables that naturally terminate with a completed event. You can also manually cancel a subscription. The subscribe operators return a value of type disposable for this purpose. Disposable is actually a protocol requiring implementation of a dispose method. You'll see that in a moment. Let's use the return value to cancel a subscription. Add a new example and start off by creating an observable of the top three most popular episodes. Now create a subscription that prints out each event, just like you did earlier, but this time save the return value. Now that you have a handle on that subscription, you can call Dispose on it to cancel it. What you'll notice now is that each next event is printed out in the console followed by the completed event. Truth be told, even if you didn't call dispose on this subscription, the observable would still terminate with a completed event because it's an observable of a finite number of elements. However, as you'll see a bit later, observables can be constructed that can continue to emit events until a stop event, that is, an error or completed event, occurs. In those cases especially, you're going to want to make sure you cancel subscriptions in order to avoid linking memory. Managing each subscription manually like this would quickly become tedious though, so that's why RxSwift has a thing called a dispose bag. Basically, you add subscriptions to a dispose bag, and when its owner is about to be deallocated, it will call dispose on its contents for you. Enter this new example. First, create a dispose bag instance using the dispose bag default initializer. Then create an observable of, in this case, the top three highest grossing episodes, so far anyway. And this time, instead of creating a local observable value and then subscribing to it, subscribe to it in line. The disposable protocol also requires implementation of a disposed by method that is used to add the disposable to a dispose bag. You can just chain calling this method onto the result returned from subscribe, which remember is a disposable. This is a pattern you'll use frequently, where you create an observable, subscribe to it, and add the disposable representing the subscription to a dispose bag, all in line like this. And in the console, you can see that each event and then the completed event is printed.